Have you ever gazed at the night sky and wondered, how did these celestial bodies, these planets come into existence? It's a question that has intrigued humankind since time immemorial, leading us on a quest for answers that takes us to the very heart of the cosmos itself. The origin of planets, their birth and evolution, is a mystery that continues to captivate us all. Throughout history, the human intellect has grappled with this cosmic puzzle, coming up with numerous theories and hypotheses. Scientists have delved deep into the mysteries of the universe, proposing diverse explanations for how our planetary neighbors and perhaps even our own Earth might have been born. One such theory, which is widely accepted by the scientific community, is the planetesimal hypothesis. It's a concept that may hold the key to understanding the formation of planets and the broader cosmic order. But, so, what exactly is this planetesimal hypothesis? Stick around to find out. The planetesimal hypothesis is a theory that aims to explain the formation of our planets. This hypothesis is a fascinating piece of astronomical puzzle solving that dives into the origins of the celestial bodies we call home. Imagine, if you will, a vast swirling nebula, a cosmic cloud of gas and dust. This nebula is not just an idle cloud, it's a birthplace of stars and planets. According to the planetesimal hypothesis, the seeds of our planets are sown right here in these nebulae. Within these cosmic nurseries, tiny particles of dust and gas start to interact. Drawn together by the fundamental force of gravity, these particles begin to collide. Each collision, each interaction causes these particles to stick together. This process is not a quick one, it's a slow dance of cosmic proportions that takes millions of years. Over time, these clumps of dust and gas grow in size and become what we term as planetesimals. These planetesimals are significant, they're the building blocks of our planets. They're like cosmic Lego bricks, each one unique but all essential in the grand scheme of planet formation. As these planetesimals continue their dance through the nebula, they start to collide and merge with each other. Each collision, each merger, causes these planetesimals to grow in size. Eventually these growing bodies become large enough to be termed as protoplanets. But the cosmic dance doesn't stop there. These protoplanets continue to collide and merge, growing larger and larger, until eventually, they form the planets that we see today. This grand process from particles of dust and gas to fully formed planets is what the planetesimal hypothesis aims to explain. In essence, the planetesimal hypothesis suggests that our planets are born out of cosmic dust and gas. It paints a picture of a universe that is constantly in motion, constantly evolving and constantly creating, a universe where even the smallest particle of dust has the potential to become a planet. And that, my friends, is a truly wonderful thought. Let's delve deeper into the key points of this fascinating hypothesis. The planetesimal hypothesis, as the name suggests, is centered around planetesimals. These are small, solid objects that are believed to exist in protoplanetary disks during the formation of a solar system. They're essentially cosmic building blocks, and they come together to create planets through a process known as accretion. Accretion, in the context of the planetesimal hypothesis, refers to the gradual growth of a celestial body by the accumulation of other smaller bodies. Picture a cosmic snowball effect. As a planetesimal moves through space, its gravitational pull attracts other, smaller planetesimals. These smaller bodies collide and stick to the larger one, causing it to grow in size. This process continues until a fully formed planet is born from these cosmic building blocks. This hypothesis elegantly explains the formation of both terrestrial and gas giant planets. Terrestrial planets like our very own Earth are thought to have formed closer to the Sun, where it was too hot for gases like hydrogen and helium to condense. Instead, these planets are made up of denser materials like rock and metal. On the other hand, gas giants such as Jupiter and Saturn are believed to have formed further out in the solar system where it's much colder. Here, lighter elements like hydrogen and helium could condense, leading to the formation of these massive gas-dominated planets. One of the most compelling aspects of the planetesimal hypothesis is how it accounts for the presence of different elements on planets. It proposes that the varying distances of planetesimals from the Sun, during the formation of the solar system, influence the types of materials they were made up of, and therefore the composition of the planets they eventually formed. In essence, the planetesimal hypothesis offers a comprehensive and logical explanation for the birth of planets. It takes into account the location, composition and size of celestial bodies, 
and provides a framework within which we can understand the beautifully diverse universe we live in. The planetesimal hypothesis is indeed a comprehensive and compelling explanation for the birth of planets. The planetesimal hypothesis, while widely accepted, is still a theory. Its strength lies in the wealth of evidence supporting it, yet it remains an interpretation of our cosmos's mysteries. Remember, science is a dynamic field, constantly evolving with every new discovery. Today's theories may be tomorrow's outdated ideas, but for now, the planetesimal hypothesis stands as our best understanding of planetary birth. As we continue to explore the cosmos, who knows what new insights we might gain about the birth of planets. Until then, the planetesimal hypothesis offers us a glimpse into the cosmic cradle of our planetary neighbors,